you try your best after the calamity to regain and go back to as normal of a lifestyle as possible. You do not allow the calamity to stop you from your life itself. You don't dwell in the past and because of a past tragedy, continuously live in misery, live in pain. No, you sort of force yourself to move on and get back into the energy of life, the rhythm of your schedule. And this is again well demonstrated. That's why our Sharia has come and said it is not allowed to mourn anybody who is dead more than three days. What does it mean it's not allowed to mourn more than three days? So for three days, you are allowed to let the grief take time to heal. Take a break from work. Just, you know, not, not really care for yourself that much. And it's just difficult to live. You take cope. Okay, max three days. If it's less than that, no problem. But max three days. After three days are over, the Sharia requires you to try your best to snap out of it. Not your internal grief, that's not going to go away ever. But your external body has to get back with the program. Why? Because our Sharia is not a morbid Sharia that you live in the past. It's the Sharia that teaches you how to live your life in the future. You cannot allow a past tragedy to affect the entirety of the rest of your life. That's not what Allah wants. Now you could be in pain and suffering. Our Prophet as we know, loved Khadija immensely. And her death was extremely difficult. In fact, the year she died is called the year of sorrow. An entire year of sorrow. Because she died, Abu Talib died. The incident of Ta'if happened. And the Sahaba said, we didn't see him smile for an entire year after the death of Khadija. That was pain. An entire year he did not smile. Anas ibn Malik tells us, five years later, I never saw anybody smile more than the Prophet ﷺ. What's happened here? Anas never saw him in Mecca. Anas saw him in Medina. Anas ibn Malik, I never saw anybody smile more than the Prophet ﷺ. This is what it means. Okay, the pain is there, the grief is there, but you need to move on. When we talked about the incident of the death of Ja'far, the, the brother or the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, when Ja'far passed away, his wife Asma, Asma bint Umais, she married Ja'far, Ja'far died. She married Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr died. She married Ali. So she was married to three people of Jannah, one after the other, subhanAllah. And she had children from all of them. Can you imagine? So there are half brothers of Ja'far and Ali and Abu Bakr, subhanAllah. All of this from, from Asma bint Umais. So, and I have a whole biography about Asma, you can list her. So Asma, she was at the time a young lady. Ja'far passes away. She's in her mid-twenties. And she could not cope with his loss. And she began wailing because she wasn't accustomed to not wailing, even though it was not allowed. And our Prophet ﷺ attempted to stop the wailing via the servants, but they did not succeed. So on the third day, the Prophet ﷺ visited the house of Asma. Three days he gave her to calm down, to let her grief come to terms. And then he said, from now on, there shall be no wailing for my brother Ja'far. Then he called the children of Ja'far and they were neglected completely, disheveled, dirty. They hadn't taken a bath, whatnot, because for three days they're mourning. And he called for a barber and cut their hair and he gave them new clothes and he arranged for food to be given to them. I want you to think about why he would do this when they've just become orphans. Give them a haircut. They've just lost a father and he comes over with basically the equivalent of gifts. Why? Because our religion teaches us you don't dwell in the past. Whatever it is, whatever tragedy happens, you need to move on, collect your wits and continue with life. You cannot live completely lost in the memories and the pain and the suffering of yesterday. That's not our religion. And in fact, it is authentically reported as well that our mother Safiya binti Huyay. Safiya, of course, was from a Jewish tribe. She converted to Islam. She married the Prophet. She had no Muslim family members. She had one brother uh, who passed away. She had no family in Medina except for one brother. And the, the Prophet passes away. She has her brother who visits every once in a while. Then her brother dies. It was a very difficult time for her. She had no family at all. Her brother passed away. And on the third day of his passing, 
she told her servant to bring her a new dress and perfume. She put, and she's a, she's a widow, the process has passed away, right? So she's no longer, she's not, yeah, there's no husband in her life. Her brother's passed away. She wore a new dress and she put on perfume. And she said to the servant, I have no desire to dress up right now. But the only reason I'm doing this, the Prophet said, it is not allowed to mourn somebody for more than three days. And today is the end of the third day that my brother has died. I need to move on now. She's doing this psychologically for herself. And this shows us from the seerah we learn, from the seerah we learn, that you do not allow a past tragedy to dictate your future happiness. That's not Islamic. My beloved brothers and sisters, be in the company of the truthful. Being truthful will take you a long way. Be truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the most important character you should have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are truthful. Don't be a liar. Don't be someone who deceives others. Be a person. who is always truthful, who is truthful to his community, to his parents, to his family, to his friends, to his colleagues. You need to learn to be truthful. And when you know more about the laws, rules and regulations of Islam, you can be more truthful to your Lord. So this is a character and conduct that everyone should learn and everyone should ponder and always send salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that will show your truthfulness to him. In a community you have to be truthful, you have to be truthful to yourself, to your work and you have to do things on time. If you are given a task, you have to fulfill it. Otherwise, you will not be truthful to yourself. So if you really want to be successful in this dunya, then you have to learn how to be truth truthful. You have to learn how to tell truth always, how to stick to truth always. You have to acquire this beautiful character and conduct. May Allah make all of us truthful. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. May Allah give us the understanding of this deen and may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdausul A'la. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.